Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Can you believe the Lamborghini Aventador is dead? After 12 quite long years, the final car has rolled off the production line and heck, by the time you're watching this video, Lamborghini may have even announced this car's replacement. Now over the years, I've never hidden the fact that I've never been a major Aventador fan. I've always thought of it as a bit of a brute and maybe not my favorite modern day supercar. But there is no denying this thing is the poster car for my generation. Wherever you go in an Aventador, people's jaws hit the floor. And last year, whilst I was in Australia, I actually got the chance to get behind the wheel of an Aventador for the first time in a long time. It was a beautiful, unmolested Gen 1 Mura edition. And all the things I've bemoaned of an Aventador over the years for kind of feeling out of date, suddenly felt a bit endearing. And I thought maybe the fact the Aventador is now an old car, in the sense you can no longer buy it new, well, it means that we can look at it in a different light, or at least I can look at it in a different light. So this week, whilst my usual daily, a Jaguar F-Type R, is off to the workshop to get prepared for a bit of a winter adventure, I asked Lamborghini if I could borrow an Aventador for the week to live with it and kind of see it off in style. And so, well, if you're going to do that, let's give you the ultimate Aventador. So yes, this is my week living with an Aventador Ultime. <laughs> Now, just quickly, throughout this video, you're gonna see me using this camera a lot. This is an Insta360 X3. I've been using Insta360 cameras for a good few years now. Lots of you have noticed shots that I've achieved using Insta360 cameras, but not really known how I've done it. These things are so clever that you can essentially attach them to a super long selfie stick, hang them out the window, or attach them to the car with a suction mount, and the camera deletes the stick from the frame, giving the kind of idea that it's a floating camera. It's absolutely genius, but this thing is so much more versatile than just being a clever 360 camera. You can use it in so many situations. It has changed the way that I film cars. I no longer need a crew or a tracking vehicle. This thing just follows me around, and you assume that I've got somebody filming me, but no, it's just the Insta360. If you are into filming cars, if you're considering filming cars, or you just want to do it as a hobby, just get this. You don't need any other action camera. This is your ultimate solution. Uh, as I say, I've been using them for a good few years now, and what's amazing is Insta360 noticed that, got in touch, and offered to sponsor one of my videos, which I'm hugely grateful for, but you should be grateful too, because they're offering you an awesome deal on an Insta360 camera. So stay tuned to the end of the video, where I'll let you know how you can get a good deal on one of these. But for now, let's go back in time to a few days ago, when I picked up this Ultima for the first time. Well, here we go then, the start of my week with an Aventador Ultime. I'm actually super excited. A few things which I'm remembering about Aventadors now that I'm sitting in this car for the first time this week. Firstly, I don't really fit. If I sit up straight, my head hits the roof lining, but that's okay. That's, well, I will sacrifice my comfort for this experience. I just have to sink down ever so slightly. I, I always forget how insanely raked angled the windscreen is it's just like it's like this and it's so cool but it does make visibility pretty bad unless you're looking forward and let's face it if you're on an Aventador you should really only ever be looking forward don't worry about what's behind you I'm super happy that this car has these comfier seats if these were the full-on bucket seats well I wouldn't have lasted more than a day I would have just I would have died apart from that Everything's pretty familiar whilst they have updated the event store over the years. None of this really changed. So yeah, I feel like I know what all this does. Especially that, the start-stop button. So let's get the, uh, the seat belt on, fire this iconic, iconic V12 into life and begin my week with this mad car. <laughs> something quickly for the record before we wrap up day one with this car no matter how many times I do this no matter how much you will think I only like Ferraris and Porsches this moment is not lost on me I just picked up a very rare and very expensive Lamborghini and I'm driving it home with one of the best sunsets I've seen in a long time and I'm in relative comfort seriously the gearbox for this car is currently in auto mode if you've ever driven an Aventador before, you'll know that's a disaster, but it's fine. 
I'm just, yeah, sitting back going, what is life? There's the, the child version of me right now is loving life. Heck, the adult version of me is loving life because this is a joke. Well, good morning. It's actually day three for me and the event store Ultime. Yesterday was a little bit of an uneventful day. I had some other work to do, so I don't really get a chance to drive this thing that much. So, this morning I've woken up relatively early. It's 7.30, the sun has just risen, and I thought I'd go for a drive in this thing. Because yeah, I'm not gonna just hang around in town with this car this week. I gotta go out for a bit of a blast. So, I found a road about an hour and 15 minutes away. Let's crack on, have some fun. and it's not going to surprise you finding a decent road in this part of the UK or a road where you can stretch the legs of an Aventador Ultimate not that easy <laughs> this is a big car and you cannot get away from that once you start going fast uh, I found a road or I thought I'd found a road got there and it was super narrow so I had to abandon it and I've come to a bigger road but bigger means busier so I am going to encounter traffic which I'll have to negotiate like a true Lamborghini racing driver here we go I mean, overtaking any car in an Aventador Ultimate, super easy. I mean, just too much power, this thing. In fact, it is the most powerful naturally aspirated Lamborghini ever made. Uh, the most powerful Aventador. This car sits somewhere between an Aventador S and an Aventador SVJ. It's more powerful than an SVJ, but it's softer. It's like an SVJ Touring. Uh, the Aventador S is actually the last Aventador that I spent any meaningful time in. Uh, Lamborghini lent me one for the weekend in Italy during Drive the World. I don't think I've ever driven an SVJ. I've definitely ridden in one. But I don't remember getting behind the wheel of it, so yeah, this is a this is a new experience for me and an experience where I'm looking at this car in a different way, a different light. Because yes, you can of course have a lot of fun pushing on an event door. It's not really like any other experience. You're just holding onto a sledgehammer as it hurls along the road. What is it, Thor, who has the big hammer? I don't I don't watch the comic stuff, but anyway, it feels like you're just holding on to something and it's it's going in a straight line. It's good at cornering actually, that's a lie. The rear wheel steering especially makes this car very agile no matter how big it is. But yeah, <laughs> it's just a and on a day like this when it is dry and you find a half decent road that doesn't have a load of traffic, it's a ton of fun. It's a ton of fun. But of course, you know, the car is also flawed. But I don't really care anymore. I'm turning around because that traffic was a nightmare. No guarantees that I'm not going to hit more traffic again, but let's keep our fingers crossed. Yep, okay. Woo, here we go. Bloody <laughs> Nora. You know, 
though the same thing happened for the previous generation Aston Martins, the old Vantage, the old Vanquish, etc. When they were selling those cars new, you'd get in them and be like, oh my god, all of this is so out of date. Compared to the rivals, these things feel so old. And then the minute they became the old, Advantage, the old banks things like that, you were like, oh, who cares about the crappy infotainment system? It's charming, and it's literally the exact same thing that's happened to this car. You know, the event store, in my mind, felt out of date in 2015. It's very different to a modern, firstly, Huracan, Urus, or Ferrari, Porsche, Maserati, etc. But, but, because it's an old car, who cares? I don't get my 360 and go, oh, I wish this had CarPlay. That's what's really letting it down. No CarPlay. If that was a brand new Ferrari and they were offering it without CarPlay, I'd be like, well, that's stupid. So it's all just about, what's it called? Uh, relativi relativity? Or just, I don't know, time. But yeah, time has been kind to this car. Because, well, I would actually own one now, genuinely. A Gen 1 Aventador, just because of what it represents and because it is such a unique and different driving experience. I can't believe I've hit traffic again, but welcome to living with an Aventador. There's really nowhere that you can drive it. This is too big, too powerful. But the best thing about this car is it's just full of emotion and character. So if you get caught in some traffic, you just slow right down, chill for two seconds, keep an eye on your mirrors, make sure no one's catching you when they do. You just put your foot to the floor. Well, boys and girls, welcome to Kicklow Spaces. You may remember I came down here for an amazing event they did in collaboration with Classic Driver, all around celebrating 30 years of the McLaren F1. Uh, that video is on the channel if you want to go and check it out. But I was literally driving past this place in the event store, and I thought I'd pop in and have a quick coffee, and I'm glad I did, because while well, there was lots of amazing cars knocking around here, but there are two specifically that, well, I want to look at, and I want to show you. Well, yes, no surprise, the first car I want to show you is a Challenge for Dali. But not just any Challenge for Dali, a Challenge for Dali which has actually appeared on this channel before. It is a car finished in Argento Nürburgring with no stripe, a very rare spec for a Stradale. But yeah, I saw this thing up at Logic when I was getting, uh, I think, the Abarth repainted. It's absolutely lovely and lovely to see it here again in this epic setting that is kick low space there's lots of cool stuff knocking around undercover but yeah oh just still i love a quirkily spec stradali even though i would have a red one with a stripe because i'm that cliched guy but anyway this this was for me there's another car knocking around back there which is for all of you yeah <laughs> i mean I really wasn't expecting this today. Literally, we were just having coffee and Luke from Kiklo said, have you ever seen a Valkyrie? And I was like, no, you wanna see one? Yes, yes I do. And here it is. I still can't believe Aston Martin actually made this thing. This is a road car. It is road legal, just look at it. It's an alien spaceship. It's also tiny like absolutely tiny but i mean you can just look at this thing and and understand aero <laughs> like it's so intricate there are so many details for me this is way more formula one car for the road than the amg project one just it looks like downforce if you google downforce surely this is what comes up <laughs> look at it it is mad so many amazing details so many bespoke details for this car which is why it blows my mind that aston martin actually made it for example luke pointed out before i started rolling the cameras back here the rear brakes the calipers are at the six o'clock position car aficionados out there let me know what other cars have those brake calipers down the bottom 
Super cool, super quirky, but yeah, look at all this intricate carbon fiber, all aiding with sucking this car to the ground. This massive rear diffuser. I mean, that screams stone chips to me. I hope that's PPF. <laughs> um, I can put the guys in touch with MVN if not. But um, yeah, look at this, the rear crash structure, similar to an F1 car. It's also the charging point for the smaller battery. There's exhaust pipes. Um, so much of this car is bespoke that actually it really only shares two components with any other vehicle. I think parts of the engine block on the main engine block is, comes from Aston Martin and then here, these uh, side reflectors. <laughs> That's it, everything else unique to this car. Absolutely mad and in this setting, Glorious, and I would love to see it on the road because I think it would just look ballistic. But yeah, my first time really getting up close with a final production Valkyrie. On the podcast, we have spoken about the fact that these things have had issues. And I think some people are still waiting for theirs to turn up, but issues or not, when you stand next to one, it's hard not to be absolutely blown away by it. Incredible. I made that coffee stop. My good lord. Huge thanks to Luke and the Kicklow team for letting me film that uh, Valkyrie. I even got to sit in it for, a, for an Instagram reel. So yeah, go check that out on my Instagram page. Uh, if you want to store your car next to a Valkyrie or in that amazing setting, get in touch with them because as you saw, well, they take things pretty seriously. It's a beautiful, beautiful setup there and they really look after the things that they are looking after. They also do sales, so if you're looking to get your car sold, get in touch with Kiklo. But yeah, anyway, for now, it's time to head back into town. It's been a it's been a great, but it's been a long morning. It's coming up to one o'clock, so I'm running a little bit behind schedule. So yeah, back into London to continue my week with the Ultimate. Well, welcome to day four with the Aventador Ultimate. Time is really flying by. I hand this car back to Lamborghini tomorrow. Uh, I'm on my way to a meeting in town uh, and I wasn't actually going to take the event store because I think it's a bit rogue turning up to a meeting in a, what is this, £400,000 Lamborghini? Uh, but my wife and my baby commandeered the family X3 and none of my other cars around at the moment. They're all dotted all over the place getting things done to them. So yeah, this was my only choice. <laughs> and you know, I'm not that sad about it. Any excuse to drive the event store is a, is a, well, I will find any excuse to drive the event store. But having said that, driving this thing in town is a bit of a disaster. This, this is when this car's flaws are really shown up. It doesn't want to go slowly, this car, nor should it. It's a fully fledged V12 supercar. You should be driving them in the city, but everyone does. If you live in any major city around the world, you will have seen an event store going to the club. I don't know why people do it. The fitability in town is really bad. The car is huge, as I say, it's lurching all over the place. You have to keep knocking it into neutral so you don't burn up the clutch. Like it's, it's a pig. On the flip side of that, it's actually surprisingly practical, this car, in terms of kind of storage. The boot on the event store is pretty good size, way better than, for example, the Huracan. You also get this shelf back here that you can put, you can even put bags there. The cabin feels big, probably because it is, because the car's huge, but the passenger seat and the footwell are sort of roomy, so you can put loads of stuff there too if you don't have a passenger with you. Yeah, it's 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 usable in that sense. But I just don't think you'd want to. I'm actually secretly kind of enjoying this, because as I said, I'm looking for any excuse to drive this car this week. But I think if I had to do this every day, it would start to become a bore. And I might be slightly embarrassed in about five minutes when I rock up to this office, and I'm assuming Everyone's going to look out the window or come out and take pictures. And I'm going to be that guy who turned up to a meeting in the event store ultimately. Well, here I am then, back at Lamborghini, returning the event store ultimate. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit sad. I genuinely had a brilliant time with this car. I shouldn't sound surprised, but I am surprised based on previous experiences I've had with event stores. But I've used this thing in kind of every situation I possibly could this week. And I've enjoyed it in every single situation. It's honestly a wicked bit of kit. Now, I've got to be aware of the fact that this is the ultimate event store, the event store ultimate. So if anyone was going to turn my head, it was going to be this one. Maybe my idea of a Gen 1 unmolested event store one might not quite live up to the experience I've had with this. But not that it was ever disputed. The event store, in my mind, 100% an icon and I will look back at it in the same way that I do Kuntash, Diablo etc. Ultimate 
poster cars. Anyway, let me just quickly remind you about something I said at the beginning of the video, Insta360. I mentioned they got a deal for you. If you use my link in the description below, you can get yourself a free selfie stick, which I think is the most ultimate or actually essential accessory for any Insta360 camera. Or you could get yourself a lens guard, because obviously 360 camera, two lenses, you've got to protect them. So yeah, go and check them out. The link is in below. And I say if you're ever filming cars, Insta360 for me just changes the game. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I've definitely enjoyed the experience. Subscribe now because there's plenty more videos still to come.